All right, so today has been a awesome day. So, so much fun today. Uh, started out with losing power at two o'clock in the morning. Everything went dark. Um, after that, uh, we, we, it took till about 6.30 before it was cold enough for us to kind of just, hey, let's get up, get our day started, get out. So we went out to eat, have breakfast, um, and then just ran some errands and, and took care of business. Finally got home after the, the power came back on. Um, cleaned up some trees in the yard and and got Jeremiah out so that we could burn some energy out of that little man. Um, so it's a little late, but did get my two chapters done, all of my reading, family time, prayer time, scripture time, uh, all my habits in today. Today's my down day on working out, but I did uh, do about 30 minutes of, of brisk walking. Um, got on the treadmill just to just to walk. Uh, make sure I still hit my 10,000 steps for the day, but um, wasn't necessarily looking to, to work out, so to speak. Um, so today, started a new book, Science of Success from Napoleon Hill. Um, he's written a handful of success books, actually. Um, and the first chapter in this one really just kind of walks through some of his background, where he came from, because he, he, he is a rags to riches story and talks about some of the, the interesting conversations because um, his story ultimately was that he um, came from, from very little and, and worked very hard, um, was on, on the route to going to law school and started writing um, for periodicals about success. What he'd do is he'd interview successful people and write about it for the newspaper or whatever periodical. And he ended up getting an interview with Dale Carnegie, the, the steel magnet, of that era um and and dale carnegie he kind of put a challenge in front of him to spend 20 years studying success and he said he would he would write letters of recommendation to get him interviews um with the the top people um in every industry so that he could write out um the formula for success so to speak and and that ultimately led to the writing of this book book thinking grow rich um, and a handful of other books and book series. Um, and so that's kind of the foundational point where we're kind of getting some of the history and, and they share some of the success principles and how even knowing some of the success principles, um, most people never, never have the ability to implement them in their life. Um, so like it, it wraps up the chapter with, with seven habits um, or seven seven principles, basic principles that provide success is the golden rule, uh, cosmic, cosmic habit force, meaning developing, uh, great habits, concentration, uh, a pleasing personality, uh, self-control, uh, a habit of health and a habit of saving in, and that's budgeting time, income and expenditures. Um, and just those seven habits, most people never actually implement in their life. Um, and so we're, we're going to get into the rest of the book as we go, but these chapters are, are a little bit smaller than, than the last book. So this book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, these chapters are a beast, but they are so full of amazing information. Um, today's chapter um, was about personal management um and the, the topic is put first things first and it kind of reminds me of my, one of my favorite quotes which is first things first but not necessarily in that order and uh the reason people I, I i love that quote is because most people think they're doing the first things first but they're not um a lot of people sacrifice the important for whatever urgency has come up um and and this chapter actually talks a lot about that um, in developing a weekly plan for your life and then a daily daily planning um, based on what your weekly plan is and making sure that you're building in time in your week to hit the important things, even if they're not urgencies. And that, that there's really a, a, a paradigm of four different categories. You've, you've got a, you've got the, the urgent and important Next to that, you've got the important but not urgent. Below that, you have the, the urgent but not important, and the urgent, or the non-urgent and non-important. 
Um, and most people either live their life in crisis mode, always knocking out urgent and important, or they end up in, in just the bottom two, knocking out a bunch of unimportant stuff altogether and never actually move forward. Um, where you, you need to kind of find this balance and, and ultimately you want to live somewhere between 70 to 90 percent in that that non-urgent but important era and then knocking out the true emergencies that are important as they come up as as you know 10 to 30 percent of your your day or your life um, because if you're knocking out things before they become urgent and you're knocking out all the important things then all of the important things never make it to emergencies um, because you're 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 managing them properly and ahead of time um, and, and it gives you a certain level of peace because you're you're not working in crisis mode all the time um, you're not making decisions in the heat of the moment because if it's not a crisis you've got time to think and and let things mull over and uh, make sound clear principle based decisions instead of emotional decision that's based on the urgency of the situation. Um, also talked a lot about um, the ability to delegate. So like if there's if there's something that's urgent but not important, um, does it have to be you that does it? Um, and, and one of my mentors actually talks a lot about delegating the things you cannot do or delegating the things anyone can do that have to get done. Um, and and learning to only do the things that only you can do right so only i can be my wife's husband only i can be my son's dad um anyone could cut the grass i i could i could pay someone 20 bucks to cut the grass well our yard is a little bit bigger so it might be a little more than 20 bucks but the point is that it doesn't have to be me that cuts the grass the grass still needs to get cut but it may be worth having someone else cut the grass so that I can spend my energy focusing on developing my business and my cash flow so that I can spend more time with my wife and son um, because ultimately I'm the only one who can be the father and husband. Um, I can't delegate those tasks out, um, but there's a lot of things that I can delegate out or, or have other people do. Uh, and that way it allows us to maximize our energy and focus and concentration on the things that only we can do. And hopefully those things are the important things that aren't necessarily urgent yet. Um, so that we can make sure that they don't become urgencies because we're taking care of them on the front end. Um, so, yeah, tomorrow is going to be about... Uh, shifting into some of the public victories. So chapter four, five, and six are more in line with um, some of the uh, public victories and less less about the internal victories of, of personal development and overcoming. So uh, with that, love you guys. Hope you guys have an amazing evening and uh, stay on top of your game. Um, stay accountable. Condense the pain. Bloop.